sucralose, marketed under the brand name Splenda, is a best-selling artificial sweetener around the world. In the European Union, sucralose is also known under the additive code E955. Splenda is found in tens of thousands of processed food products sold in 90 different countries, many of which are specifically marketed to those seeking to either lose weight, or manage their diabetes. Mounting research, however, shows that not only does it tend to worsen both of those problems, but it's also associated with an array of other troublesome side effects. The website truthaboutsplenda.com lists a variety of consumer complaints from Splenda consumption, many of which mimic other health conditions. Some of the most commonly reported adverse effects include gastrointestinal problems, seizures, dizziness, and migraines, blurred vision, allergic reactions, blood sugar increases and weight gain. But that's not all. Now, an in-depth scientific review of sucralose published in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health reveals an extensive list of safety concerns, including toxicity, DNA damage, and hay-tanned carcinogenic potential when used in cooking. It also blows a huge hole in the argument that Splenda is a good choice for diabetics or those seeking to lose weight. Sucralose, not safe for cooking after all. The featured report came to several important conclusions, all of which challenge the generally recognized as safe, grass status of sucralose. Of primary concern is that sucralose is not an inert substance. When heated, it releases chloropropanols, which belong to a class of toxins known as dioxins. One of the selling points of Splenda is that it remains stable when heated, making it well suited for cooking and baking, but these findings refute such claims. Many other artificial sweeteners, such as aspartame, are not recommended for cooking purposes as they're known to break down in high temperatures. As reported by Sayerg at GreenMedInfo.com, research now shows that sucralose starts breaking down at 119 degrees Celsius. 180 degrees Celsius causes it to degrade completely. Dioxin is a waste product of incineration, smelting, chlorine bleaching, and pesticide manufacturing and its well-documented health effects, include cancer and endocrine disruption. In fact, dioxin, which was a toxic component of the Agent Orange used to defoliate jungles during the Vietnam War, is easily one of the most dangerous chemicals known to man. Another study, published in October, also expressed concern over the chlorination reactions that occur when sucralose is cooked in stainless steel cookware, generating highly toxic compounds including dioxins and polychlorinated dibenzofurans PCDFs. Recent animal research also suggests a link between Splenda consumption and an increased risk of leukemia. Based on such research, the time is more than ripe for the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, to reconsider the grass status of sucralose. Sucralose also destroys your gut health. The featured review also concluded that sucralose destroys gut bacteria. In fact, animal research published in 2008 found it could kill as much as 50% of your microbiome. This is very important, as any time you destroy healthy intestinal bacteria, you open yourself up to unfriendly microorganisms that can cause health problems. Your immune system, which is imperative for general health, is dependent on healthy gut flora. So the idea that this artificial sweetener may destroy up to half of all your healthy gut bacteria is disconcerting to say the least. Worse yet, sucralose appears to target beneficial microorganisms to a greater extent than pathogenic and other more detrimental bacteria. And remarkably, according to one study, these adverse effects on gut microbiota remained even after a three-month long recovery period. Early studies, upon which its approval was based, claimed that sucralose would simply pass unchanged through the human gastrointestinal tract, but more recent investigations show that it is indeed metabolized in your gut. And, as reported in the featured review, the identity and safety profile of these putative sucralose metabolites are not known at this time. Diabetics beware. The third issue is of particular importance for diabetics, who tend to use artificial sweeteners to manage their condition. 
Alas, both animal and human studies showed sucralose alters glucose, insulin and glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1 levels. A related study published in the journal Diabetes Care in September came to a virtually identical conclusion. Compared to the control group, obese patients using sucralose experienced a greater incremental increase in peak plasma concentrations, a greater incremental increase in insulin and peak insulin secretion rate, along with a decrease in insulin clearance. According to the authors, these data demonstrate that sucralose affects the glycemic and insulin responses to an oral glucose load in obese people who do not normally consume non-nutritive sweeteners. Toxicological issues still need to be addressed. According to the featured review, there are numerous toxicological issues regarding long-term exposure to sucralose that remain unresolved. This includes genotoxicity, DNA damage, and potentially adverse epigenetic effects. The generation of toxic compounds when heated. Bioaccumulation. One 2009 study found unmistakable evidence that Splenda is absorbed by body fat, contrary to previous claims. Potential drug interactions. The paper also notes that the acceptable daily intake, ADI, set for sucralose may in fact be hundreds of times too high to ensure safety. According to more recent research, the no-observed effect level, NOEL in rats gut bacteria is actually 454 times lower than earlier studies showed. If the biological effects of sucralose are similar in both rats and humans, then you could experience health effects, even if you consume sucralose at levels well below the ADI. Also consider this. Sucralose is classified by the FDA as safe for human consumption as a food additive. The FDA stated that their decision was based upon results from 110 animal and human studies of the effects of sucralose. Of the 110 studies, two were on human beings, with one being a four-day trial by the manufacturer, the examiner reports. I might also add that these two studies consisted of a combined total of 36 people, of which only 23 people actually ingested sucralose, and the four-day trial looked at sucralose in relation to tooth decay, not human tolerance. Sadly, if you're a long-term Splenda user, you're actually acting as a human guinea pig, as no one knows what happens when humans consume this substance for long periods. If you look through the research literature, you'll find that only about 10% of the studies involving sucralose have anything at all to do with safety. In fact, eight years ago when I wrote the book Sweet Deception, in which I exposed the many concerns related to the consumption of artificial sweeteners, there were only 15 studies relating to the safety of sucralose, and 13 of them were funded by the company that makes Splenda, leaving enormous room for conflict of interest.